Mr. Hakim Odumosu joins us this morning. He's Commissioner of Police in Lagos State. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, we are aware that you had that meeting yesterday with your men just to ensure that the orders of the IGP are carried out to the letter. But then there are concerns. Uh, going forward, what are we to expect? Hello, good morning. Good, good morning. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Okay, good morning. So, in line with the Secretary so General of Police, Adamu Mohammed, <coughs> MMF, MPM, so directive, in, oh, in the course of repositioning the SARS, in the course of repositioning the SARS, now I held a marathon lecture with uh, my officers of the state SARS, Special Anti Robbery Squad, equally all the area commanders all the tactical commanders as well as the head of various departments the management team yesterday so in order to sensitize them and to read out the IGP's directive to them mm. in Charlie, what actually did was that the IGP directive everything was out and I handed it over to them one, every one of them, each to them and we all read everything from one first line to the last line we analyzed it I will warn them. So equally, I set up monitoring team in compliance with that directive to mm. all the area commanders so that um, there will be the monitoring officers in the areas. Well, one, one moment, Mr. Yeah. Uh This is not the first time. The exact same order, exact same list of activities, monitoring, enforcement, uh, and all of that. What's the assurance people have that this is going to be different, the results will be different, and much longer lasting than the ones we've had previously? It's going to be different because now there's going to be more monitoring and more supervision. For example, Does that suggest that there was, is the monitoring, previous monitoring was not enough? Um, now, you know, when there are circumstances, changes, issues in life, like yesterday or now, additional directive I gave is that they must not go even to investigate without booking their arrival at the area commander's office. So the area commander will know that they are in that area doing what they ought to want to do. And once they finish out, they must go back and go avoid the entry. Secondly, I gave a directive that they must not detain anybody in their cell any longer. So they can only detain at their at my office or at the other commander's office. Because either to this one now, they have their various offices attached to their segment. And I gave directly that they must not detain any longer. The other commander must interview any suspect they want to detain and ascertain that that person actually paid offense. They were already being detained. All these are additional measures that were put in. So to make sure that this provision is effective. And I'm calling a routine to the, all the other commanders now for that. So there's more supervision now than what it used to be before. So that's why it's going to be better than what has been on in the time of SARS. I was going to ask you, did your men give their words that they would obey the new directive? Did they give you something affirmative saying, yes, we're going to abide by this? The gave, but I'm even going to tell further. Because uh, they are all signing undertaking, undertaking, so in writing, so that uh, wherever they go contrary to the directive of IGP, they have that evidence now for us now to treat and deal with them according to the extant law of discipline. Right, because right after the IGP gave the order, I believe it was on Sunday, on Monday, a lot of Nigerians put up videos saying, I thought the activities of SARS was banned, especially roadblocks and what have you. And they put up videos saying, these men are still on the road, these men are still stopping us. In fact, some of them still wearing mufti, regardless of that order from the IGP. So that's the question. Did they all get the memo? They all got the memo. But in Lagos, let us understand something in Lagos, a peculiar state. We are the four CID members in Lagos, 
who traditionally they don't put on uniform. They are the first side the investigating team. We have the SFU, Special Ford Unit, in Minerva team, still in Lagos, Ikoi. So normally they don't put operationally, they don't put on uniform. So we have some segments of police like that that don't put on uniform because they are in the investigative team. But all the SARS members now, they have their own tactical gear, uniform that they put on. And with the cap, with the federal SARS, the state SARS, mostly emboldened on them. So all those ones now, so if you see any of them further on the road, is that they belong to that investigative team? But SARS members anti kidnapping and anti cultism all other tactical members now, they must put on their uniform in compliance with IG's directive. And as I mentioned earlier, they are not just a firm that are going to comply, they are signing on that in writing so that they will not say they are not aware. They will not say they are not, so they are committing themselves to writing, which could be used as evidence to deal with them administratively when they go contrary to the professional ethics of the force. Well, these are not FSAs now, but SARS. SARS in the command, they report to you, don't they? Uh, the SARS in the command reports to me, but we have federal SARS. Federal SARS don't report to me. Federal yes, we're talking about SARS. State SARS. That's yes, state SARS, SARS were, were, weren't they part of the directive by the IGP? They are equally. They equally have the commissioner, and they have commissioner in charge of federal SARS. They have the office in Lagos at Adin Yadini. Those sort of who well, don't report to me, but they are still the same police. For example, now the two people that we are caught at and are caught now being tried, they are members of federal SARS. And as commissioner of police everywhere, any superior officer in any part of the country has the power to deal with any subordinate officer who goes contrary to the ethics of the profession. So the fact that they are federal stars, so does not mean that they are not under my under my disciplinary control. They are still just that my own sisters are called under this very control of the commissioner of police in charge of federal staff. That is the setup of Nigerian police force. Okay, because there are many who are concerned. Uh, Saying SARS in the command report to the commissioner of police in the state, why is it that the CPs have not been able to rein them in? Why do they appear as though they are above the law and the CPs cannot uh, give them directive for them to obey? No, we always give them directive. The one thing I always employ members of the public is that once there's any infraction, so in their professional misconduct, they should let the police authorities know at all the levels, either at the rear commander's level, either at the regional police level, officer's level, either at the level of myself, the commissioner police, or the assistance of the general police. It's on two. So they should, and once this one knowledge, I assure you, I'll be doing it. We are not going to, and we shall never control any form of indiscipline or brutality to members of the public. Because so, it's violating their fundamental human rights. Which so as it stands now, um, now that that directive has come through, do we still have the anti-cultism and all of those units still operational in they Lagos? They are still operational, but the operations are not fired. Number one, they must be in their operational uniform, not just wearing anything they like. Number two, they must only go out in pursuit of criminals in that aspect. That is, when they are investigating, they no longer ask the authority to stop any vehicle on the road and search. They no longer ask the authority now to go on patrol. So they only move out now on information. Whether it's a kidnapper, when there's a complaint, or information that kidnappers are present somewhere, or cultists are present somewhere, they move straight to that venue of that act, and they take action immediately. Even going to that area, you must notify the area commander in charge of that area to know that they are there. So that if there's any infraction, there's any misbehavior, so they can really contact the area commander now and action taken against them. All right. Now, are you aware of arrests that were made during a fixed Lagos Badagri Expressway uh, protest on October the 1st? Are you aware of any arrests that were made then? I'm aware. 
Because, uh, I mean, the protesters, in fact, we had uh, one of the lead leaders of the protest you know, saying that, I mean, the men just came, arrested them, we're seeing pictures now. And I wonder, is that the brief they got from the police authorities or those were just men acting out of their jurisdiction? No, actually, the mode of arrest uh, is determined by what happens at the scene of incident. So they are aware that uh, only children were arrested and uh, actually they are released on bail. So they are released on bail. So when they become unruly, that was the report I got anyway. So that the arrest was made and uh, they are presently on bail because the court is taking action on them. I'm aware of the arrest. One final thing. Are you aware of any protests uh, planned to take place today in Lagos regarding the NSAS now campaign? Well, there are so many things going on social media. I'm not going to say I've, I've not heard of it, I read of it. But uh, equally, so I was told that since the government, federal government, has taken action, and it's a general police too, has rolled out, and we, commissioner of police now, have taken key from there to enforce the Social General Police Directive, that that has been shelved. That is the last information that I heard about it. That well, you don't, you, don't, so you don't have anything against citizens, uh, I mean, showing their fundamental right to protest, right? No, I didn't have, no. So what I heard about yesterday night was that I think they about symbol at uh, Lake if it's one, so which I'm aware of, and which our men have been deployed accordingly to protect them, to make sure that it's not like that. If they decide to come out. It's a fundamental right. But the information I had last is that since federal government as well as the general police are taking proactive steps, so they've showed that idea. But be that as it may, our men are always at a last. So that any protest coming out will not be judged by hoodlums and unleash terror on innocent and law abiding citizens of the state. I wish, uh, is the police supposed to arrest? People who are protesting peacefully? And that's not my language. We are to protect everybody. And you know that those that are protesting, so no matter how good their intentions are, you will see some miscreants who want to seize the opportunity to unleash terror and reap where they not so. And that's why we are always aware, we are always proactive. I will also provide security even for their own life so that they will not be attached and they will not see the opportunity now to cause them. And equally, to make sure that traffic management is put in place. So that while they are protesting, which is their right, others who have access to the road will not be disturbed to go about their normal businesses on the road. In other words, those who are protesting peacefully, the police have no business arresting them. Once they have not gone contrary to any law of the land, so police will probably provide security for them to let them go peacefully without being attacked themselves and without being attacked by criminal-minded people. What constitutes uh, one going against the law of the land if they are protesting? For example, you know what happened at Ojota? Ojota the other time now, there was a barricade there. And the barricade was about to be uprooted. That is willful damage to government property. That's no more a protest. It's, yeah. So something like that for now, they are going contrary to the law of the land. So that's a just uh, that is Ghana Farm Park now. It's a government park, and all the properties put there now belong to you and I. So someone wants to seize the opportunity now to uproot all those barricades they have there. So that's what now is the protest taking a step further. So do you, now police don't close eyes and allow willful damage to government property. Right. On a final note, do you also think that this whole NSARS now campaign is a coordinated, uh, well, some say it's a coordinated approach or some kind of campaign by cyber criminals and some sort of miscreants and unsuspecting citizens are joining in? Is that what you think about this also? Well, as a police officer, so every lead will need to be followed in the course of maintaining peace and tranquility in the society. So nothing can be rolled out, and at the same time now, nothing we cannot fabricate. But our is to be proactive, to be at a lot, so that if there's any infraction, 
If there's certain new thing that can lead to break down law and order, the police will take appropriate action in line with laid down rules of the land. Saki Modumosu, Commissioner of Police in Lagos, says thank you for talking to us this morning. My pleasure. God bless you all. And God bless Nigeria.